Hi, good morning everyone and welcome back to the Geography Classroom. Now, I am really, really sorry that there wasn't a session last week. Basically, I dropped the iPad, cracked the screen and it meant that I couldn't do any of the work on the videos that I needed to to put it all together and it was a bit of a palaver. However, the iPad is now fixed, we are back and we are starting some new work on volcanoes and earthquakes. Basically, what we call tectonic hazards. Now, I'm going to go through the list of things that you're going to need today, then we're going to do the quiz, and then we're going to make a start. Now, hopefully, lots of you watched last week's documentary that I put up instead of the session. Um, I absolutely love Kate Humble and Ian Stewart. They are very knowledgeable, but we're going to take a little dive in today to, as I say, tectonics, volcanoes and earthquakes. What is happening under the surface of the earth that we live on? Right, what you are going to need for today, then? you will need your map that you created in the first week. It's actually getting quite busy now because we keep adding more and more layers of information onto it. That actually has a special name in geography. It's called GIS. It's called Geographical Information Systems. And we're going to add another layer of information onto this map today. Second thing you'll need, as usual, is a plain piece of paper. You will need your colouring pencils. You will definitely need a red, you'll definitely need a brown, probably need a yellow or an orange. You will need a normal pencil, a ruler, and I would like it if you could get a plate. So something round that you can draw around. Now the plate I've got is plastic, just in case I drop it. So grow, go and grab the bits that you need and we'll be back here in just a okay. second. So now that you've got everything that you need, we're gonna start with a quiz, going back over all the things that we have learned already. So write the numbers, please, on the back of your big piece of paper. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Now, let me remind you, because we've had a week off, the reason that we do these quizzes is to help you to keep hold of all the cool things that you're learning and to convert them into your long-term memory. Hopefully it means you'll know them forever. Now, each time I ask you a quiz question and you have to think really hard, even if you get the answer wrong, it still means that your brain is growing and getting bigger and getting stronger and you're more likely to remember it correctly in the future. Now, remember as well, if you are struggling or you want a bit more time to write out one of your answers, just pause the video in between each question to take a moment to write it down. Okay, so let's get started. Question number one. Name the three global oceans. So name the three global oceans. Okay, question number two. Which continent would you find Mozambique in? So which continent is Mozambique found in? Okay, question number three. Can you name all five of the megafauna species that we studied in Mozambique? So I talked about five. You then went and researched one of them in detail. But what were those megafauna that were found in Mozambique? Okay, question number four. Can you name the desert that we studied? So can you name the desert that we studied? Okay, question number five. Which country did we study that has a tundra biome? Which country did we study that has a tundra biome? Okay, question number six. Which two species in the Galapagos have got a symbiotic relationship? It means they're best friends. Which two species in the Galapagos have got a symbiotic relationship? Okay, I'm going to give you a clue. One of them does this and the other one does this. And I kept giving it the wrong name, but I've checked it up this week and I know exactly what it is. Okay, question number seven. Can you name the global biomes. So remember our acronym, the sad dog through the poo. Use the acronym, what are the six global biomes? Okay, and then question number eight. Is Australia a country 
or a continent? So is Australia a country or a continent? Right, pause the video, go back to any of the questions that you're not sure of, and I'll see you here in just a minute for the answers. Hey team, well welcome back, and let's go through the answers. So question number one was, can you name the three oceans? Now, this is so important, and for some reason, people always struggle to remember them. So, number one, the Atlantic Ocean. Number two, the Pacific Ocean. And number three, the Indian Ocean. There are lots of other seas, but they are the three major oceans. Okay, so then my second question was, which continent would you find Mozambique in? And that is in Africa. Okay, question number three, and I loved the work that you sent me and the research that you did on your different species of megafauna, but the five, big five, that's what they call the mega, meaning massive, are humpback whales, turtles, manta rays, sharks and whale sharks amazing amazing some of the work that you did was absolutely brilliant and i loved some of the suggestions that you came up with for protecting those species it was really good okay what was the name of the desert that we studied that was the sahara and then which country did we study that has the tundra so that was canada then what was the, uh, the two species that have a symbiotic relationship, their best friends that are found in the Galapagos Islands? That is, of course, the marine iguana that shoots salt bombs out of his nose and the mockingbird. Now, I realise I called that animal 12 different names. It's the mockingbird. I apologise. I had a brain moment there. Right, now let's name the six biomes. So we've got the sad dog through the poo. So I'm looking for six. So we have T for tropical rainforest, S for savanna, then we have D for desert, good. Then we have got T for temperate forest, T for tundra, and the coldest one is our polar biome. And then my last question to you was, is Australia a country or a continent? Now, this is almost a trick question. So Australia is the name of the country and Australasia is the name of the continent. Now, I know that one's quite hard to remember. Right, I'm going to hold up the answers so that if you want to pause the video, you can. So they're the answers to questions one to four. And then these are the answers for question five through eight. If you need to pause it now to catch up, absolutely do so. And I'll see you back here in a minute to start today's session. So I am mega excited because, as I say, we're going to start talking now about earthquakes and volcanoes. And there is nothing more exciting than earthquakes and volcanoes, in my opinion. They are some of the most extreme, explosive, dangerous, exciting geographical geographical events that take place on the face of this planet and they're all natural they're all caused by a natural process and that's where we're going to start our journey now i don't know if you've ever thought about this before but what is underneath us and actually what is underneath us at different levels is the place that we're going to start this journey so i want you to give your sheet of paper a title today and the title is The Structure of the Earth. Now, if we think about this, I'll just hold it up. The Structure of the Earth. Now, when we think about something having a structure, it means what is it made up from? And we're going to learn a little bit about the structure of the Earth in today's lesson. What is happening underneath our feet? Now, I know some of you have got family members that live in Australia, which is this strange concept because it's a country on a different continent in another part of the world, in another hemisphere. But there is something between us and Australia. And today's session, we're going to pull that apart and we're going to figure out what this structure of the earth is. Now, to do that, the first thing that I would like us to do is to take our plate and to draw around it on our piece of paper on the left hand side so i'll show you what i mean 
There you go. So we have got, this is essentially now the earth. Now, what I'd like you to do is to put a dot as close to where you think the middle is of that circle. There you go. Because what we're then going to do is we are going to draw a slice out of the pie, essentially, of what's happening. And I'll show you what I mean in just a second. So we are going to draw the earth and then we are going to figure out exactly what is happening under the surface of the earth. So let me show you exactly what it is that I have drawn. So here we've got the centre of the earth, okay? And then as you can see, what I've done with my ruler is I've drawn almost what looks like a piece of pie and then drawn a big copy of that piece of pie here. So the first thing you need to do is take your ruler and to draw these lines to represent the piece of pie that's missing. And then the second thing that you need to draw is this triangle. And if you notice, it, mine's got a curved roof because that represents the curve in the surface of the earth. If you need to pause the video now, do. And then we're going to come back and we're going to show you what to do next. Okay, so what you've essentially got now is the earth here with a big slice cut out of it. Because what we're going to do in the rest of this session is we're going to travel from the surface of the earth where we live right down into the middle of the earth. And we're going to find out what is happening on our way down there. And this all explains why we have earthquakes and volcanoes. Now, the first thing that I would like you to do, I'd like you to grab your blue and your green pencil. And I want you to make this part of the circle very obviously the earth, okay? So we're gonna draw some land and then we're gonna draw some sea. And once you've done that, we're gonna come back and I'm gonna show you this amazing diagram that shows you exactly what is happening as we travel down to the center. So this isn't perfect by any means, but what I've tried to do is show the earth. So this to me is the continent of Africa. This is the continent of Asia. And then this is the continent of Australasia. As I say, it's not perfect, but it gives the right impression. Now, what I'm gonna do is show you a diagram. And I want you to take a really, really good look at that diagram, because what it's gonna do is show us the journey that we would go on if we were traveling from the outside of the earth, so where we live right now, right down into its center. I want you to try and remember two things. How many different layers are there as we travel from the surface of the earth into the center? And can you remember the names of any of them? So have a really good look at the video, um, sorry, at the diagram now, and I'll be back in just a second. So you've had a really, really good look. And my first question was, how many layers were there? So can you now hold up on your hand how many layers you think there are? If you are holding up three fingers, you should be holding up one more. So there are four layers to the earth. Now, I think that's really important that we start with that piece of information. So what we're gonna do is we're now gonna start filling in our piece of pie. So, I'm going to draw a little circle around the bottom, a line a bit further up, and then a very skinny one along the top, okay? So if you have a look at my piece of pie now, you can see I've got layer one, layer two, layer three, which is much bigger, and then layer four, which is the outer one. Now, I'm going to actually add those numbers so that I can keep track of this. And I'm going to start with the one in the middle as being layer one, layer two, layer three, and layer four. So that's what it looks like. Layer one, two, three, and four. Okay. Now, the next question I asked you is, can anyone remember the name of any of those layers? So, have a little think. Can you remember the names at all? Right, I'm hoping that in your brain, one of you saying core, I heard the word or I saw the word core, and maybe that you saw the word crust, 
And then probably a word that you don't know or haven't heard before, which would have been mantle. Now, core means the middle of something. You know, when you eat an apple and you eat it down, you eat to the core. Most people don't eat the middle bit of it, although my friend Nathan does, and I think it's grim. But you eat down to the core. Now, the middle of the earth is called the core. And actually, it has two different names. It has the inner core, which is the bit right in the middle. And then it has the outer core, which is the bit just above it. So we've got our inner core and our outer core, okay? Now, layer number three is the word that I suspect most of you haven't heard before. So we're gonna say it a couple of times just to make sure that you feel comfortable with it. The word is mantle. You might have heard it in terms of you have a mantle piece at home, but it doesn't really relate to it, but say it for me, mantle. Say it again. Say it really quietly, mantle. Now say it really loud. Mantle! Okay, so layer number three is the mantle. Okay, great. So that gives us layer number one, the inner core, layer number two, the outer core, then we have the mantle, which means that this outer layer, the one that you live on, the one that we're standing on right now, that's actually what we call the crust. And again, I'm going to talk about food, because on a loaf of bread, you have got... And some of you will love your crust and some of you will not love your crust. The bit around the outside is called the crust. So it's the same with the earth. We have our inner core and our outer core, just like the apple, the bit right in the middle. And then on the outer layer, we have the crust. And in between, we have this layer called the mantle. Now, what we are going to do is we're going to colour these in, but we're going to colour them in with reason. And then I'm going to tell you a little bit about what's happening in each of these layers. And then I think that's probably going to be enough for this week, because next week I'm then going to explain why this matters when we're talking about earthquakes and volcanoes. So can I ask you please to get your red pencil, a orange pencil, a yellow pencil, and oh no, mine's missing, a brown pencil. Right. I'm just going to go and look at my bag. I'll be back in one second. My brown pencil is missing. So get yourselves a red, a yellow, an orange, and a brown, please. Okay, okay. I found my brown. Right, so what we're going to do is this. The red is going to symbolise the highest temperature. So what I'd like you to do is we're going to create something that's called a, well, essentially like a key, or it's a bit going to be a bit like a thermometer. On the bottom of the page... I want you to just draw a little box, okay? And I'll show you exactly what I'm doing in just a second, like this. And there, so you can see I've drawn a little box on the bottom. Now, at one end of that box, I'm gonna write the word hot, and at the other end, I'm gonna write the word cold, although I just spelt it wrong, which is crazy. So I'm gonna write cold, okay? It probably should say colder, but we're gonna have hot, to cold. Now, what I'd like you to do is to get your pencil, your red one, and to shade in about a quarter of that box dark red. I want you to press down really, really hard. I know most people would tell you to be delicate with your pencils. I would like the opposite right now. I want you to press super hard so that your temperature range looks like that. Right, then you are gonna get your orange. And you're going to fill to about halfway through that box with dark orange, okay? So it looks a bit like that. Then I want you to take your yellow and to go to about three quarters of that box with yellow. So it looks like this. It's starting to look like a really nice lollipop, actually. And then for the brown, I want you to do the last bit, okay? So you're gonna fill the box with the brown. Although I have to say, I don't think an ice lolly would ever be brown. Now, this is gonna act like a key to us for this part of our diagram, because the inner core is actually the hottest place on earth. Now I know 
when we talked about the Sahara Desert, I told you that sometimes the temperatures in the Sahara Desert can reach as high as 80 degrees. And you remember the fennec fox had little furry feet because he wasn't able to walk on the sand because if it was 80 degrees, he'd have burnt his feet. That was his adaptation. To give you some context then, the inner core of the earth is 5,500 degrees Celsius. Nothing could survive that temperature. So what I'd like you to do is to take your red and you are gonna color in the inner core, deep, 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 deep red, to signify just how hot the inner core of our earth actually is. And next to where I've written inner core, I'm gonna write 5,500 degrees Celsius. 5,500 degrees, so hot, okay? Now, the other thing that you need to know is that this is solid. So the center of our earth is solid. It's full of a really solid type of metal. Now, as we begin to travel away, travel back towards the surface of the earth, we would go into the outer core. Now, I want you to take out your orange pencil because the outer core, I mean, it's still incredibly hot, but it is a little bit cooler than the inner core, okay? And that actually begins to form a liquid. The metals there have begun to get so hot that they form a liquid. Now, the next part of our journey is into the mantle. And this, to be honest, is where all the cool stuff is happening. So I want you to get your yellow pencil and I want you to shade in the mantle in yellow, like this, okay? So we've got the mantle that looks like that. So it signifies on our temperature range that this is a bit cooler. And then I bet you can guess what color the crust should be. That is a nice brown. Now, what is crazy, and why I say the mantle is so exciting, is because the mantle is made of a liquid. So if you guys can picture what it looks like when a volcano erupts, that's what all the material in the mantle looks like. It's basically molten rock. So in the mantle, there is a, it is liquid. But on the surface of the earth, do you stand on liquid? No, you are standing on the crust, which means it is a solid, okay? So, what we've got then? We've got the four layers that make up the structure of the earth. The inner core, which is a solid and has a ridiculous temperature of 5,500 degrees. The outer core, which is a liquid. Then the mantle, which is a liquid and the crust, which is a solid. Now, that is the basics that you need to be able to understand why volcanoes happen and why earthquakes happen. So I'm gonna actually leave you with a piece of homework this week. And I know I don't normally set you homework, but I want you to go and find out whether the crust, the surface of the earth, is it in one solid piece or is it made up of lots of different pieces? That is your homework. Is the crust made up of one piece of rock or is it made up of lots of little pieces? Right, you guys have been amazing today. I will see you next week. Well done.